Pennsylvania's state system of higher education, 14 universities, infinite opportunities. Hi, I'm Chancellor Karen Whitney, and today we're going to be talking about how our students are prepared for success after graduation. We're joined by an outstanding panel of folks today, and let me go ahead and introduce them to you. Dr. Lori Carter, president of Shippensburg University and alumni of Clarion University. Good morning, Dr. Carter. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we are also joined by Stephen Crawford, president of Wojak Government Relations and an alumnus of Mansfield University, and he also serves as a trustee of Mansfield University. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning Good to morning. you. And finally, we're joined by Linda Michaels, Assistant Vice President for Alumni and Professional Engagement in Bloomsburg University and a Bloomsburg graduate. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. Well, let's get started. So, Dr. Carter, tell us a little more about yourself. Sure. I was born in New Jersey, so when I attended Clarion, I was an out-of-state student. I was recruited by the track coach, Bill English, and I was a track and field athlete there um, and uh, a communications major really loved my Clarion experience. It was transformative for me. Uh, when I left Clarion, I went to grad school at the urging of a Clarion administrator. <laughs> and uh, that began my career in higher education. I spent uh, the first few years of my career working in residence life. Uh, then I answered an ad in the New York Times and became the director of student affairs at the Juilliard School in New York. And I stayed there for almost 25 years um, in various capacities. Um, my last position there was vice president and general counsel. Uh, so I did go to law school uh, while I was working at Juilliard. I left Juilliard um, for family reasons and transitioned um, to New Jersey Performing Arts Center to be closer to home to care for my mother who was ill. Um, when my mother was back to health, I got a call from a colleague at <laughs> Eastern Kentucky University, mm. uh, where I went to become the executive vice president and university council, and I oversaw 33 departments there, um, and that's what led me to Shippensburg University, and I could not be more happy to be there. Well, we're glad you're there, too. Stephen, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm a, a native of Columbia County, a uh, graduate of Millville High School, one of the <laughs> smallest school districts in the <laughs> Commonwealth. And, yes. um, as a, a, a graduate of a small school and a first-generation college student, uh, I chose Mansfield because it was far enough away that it was far away, but not so far that it was too far. Mm -hmm. And at the time, back in uh, 1977, it seemed big to me. It's obviously one of the smallest schools in the state system, but uh, it was a leap for, for me and my family to, uh, to go to Mansfield, to go to college. Uh, there was no experience in my family whatsoever of of uh, kids going to college. In fact, I think my relatives thought that I couldn't get a job, so I went to college. <laughs> and I said, well, that came later. But uh, um, my experiences at Mansfield were, uh, were extraordinary in that I was allowed the opportunity to grow personally and grow as a, as a future professional. One of the things about a small school like Mansfield is that you can't hide. Mm -hmm. So you are instantly engaged by your professors, by your fellow students, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. learn how to handle yourself. Um, one of the things that uh, the smartest of smart students graduating from college uh, have difficulty with sometimes is their ability to handle themselves in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that uh, I benefited from significantly. So when I left Mansfield, uh, I did an internship uh, and uh, ended up uh, doing an internship with a congressman then uh, moved on to be uh, one of the legislative directors at the, what is now the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau. Uh, it's one of the largest trade organizations in the state. Agriculture is Pennsylvania's number one industry. I was there for three years and then Governor Casey asked me to move over to the Department of Agriculture where I was a Deputy Secretary of Agriculture. And I was still in my 20s. And um, so hard work and preparation, you know, help me, uh, help me get there. I wasn't politically connected in any way whatsoever. Uh, so, uh, again, back to the, the point about being prepared to handle yourself in the uh, uh, most significant of meetings and making big decisions, that was, uh, that was an important part of it. Um, I served in the Department of Agriculture for three years, then I moved over to the legislature where for uh, a number of years I was uh, in leadership staff positions. In fact, I worked with uh, Representative Jeff Coy, who is now the uh, chair of the Council of Trustees right. at Shippensburg. Mm -hmm. um, 
And um, uh, then Governor Rendell got elected, and he asked me to be his secretary for legislative affairs. <laughs> so I joined his cabinet, and uh, I was in the administration for eight years. I spent uh, uh, five years, five and a half years as uh, his uh, secretary for legislative affairs and then as his chief of staff. So uh, I've been in the smallest of rooms making the biggest of decisions right elbow to elbow with, uh, <laughs> you know, the Ivy Leaguers. And uh, they're, no, uh, they're no better than, than the state system grads. I, and I and mean, Mansfield so. prepared you well for that. It did indeed. Yeah. Outstanding. It did indeed. Now I lead a, a government relations firm, uh, one of the biggest and one of the better ones in, in Harrisburg. There you go. Well, thank you so much. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and take a quick break and visit Shippensburg University. Okay. <laughs> Our goal is really to assist students in getting them the experience, the hands-on that they need uh, to be successful after they leave Shippensburg University. We're going to do some career counseling until we figure out what you want. Like computer skills. So here. resume and cover letter building, graduate essay review, or they're looking for an internship. And I definitely have utilized all of their different aspects because I really wanted to get a job before I graduated. Our students are the most in demand with employers. Um, they're actively seeking SHIP students. I wasn't nervous. I went into my interview, shook their hand. Um, I've done so much networking on campus from the etiquette business dinners to my internship opportunities to phone-to-phone -phone calling. So I really just went in there, gave my best self. And I feel very prepared um, with the education that Shippensburg has given me. Um, ship grads do really cool stuff when they leave here. I'm a reporter in Harrisburg and fortunately I'm doing what I love to do. Uh, IRT6. IRT6, go ahead. Probably when I was eight years old is when I knew I wanted to be a, a state trooper. So we'll bring that full circle. Email sign up and then they contact us. I've been managing a multitude of different companies. Let me combine these two items. So Launch UX is a digital marketing and creative agency. I like being able to meet new people every day. I get to tell their stories, and I know it sounds cliche, but everybody has a story to tell, everybody has a voice, and I'm the one who gets to tell it. Uh, uh, there's true victims out there, and when, when they call for help, you're the first ones to show up on the scene, and you're able to come up with a solution for it. Um, it's it's self-gratification there. Like. I was a first-time college student from my family, so I was the first in my family to go to college. So SHIP has given me an incredible opportunity here to be successful and do things that nobody in my family was ever able to do. SHIP really prepares you for everything you're going to be doing in the real world. I did a lot on campus. I was very involved. I was a part of the swim team. I did student senate. I did SUTV. I was an anchor, an executive producer, a reporter. So pretty much everything that I do now in my day-to-day -day job, I was doing already before I even graduated college. You say 39 northbound? That is correct. I was actually in the military at the time, and um, a few of the other guys uh, in my unit were criminal justice majors, and they were a little older than me, so they told me about the program, and it really stood out. There was some basics that you could teach out of a textbook, but when I was here at Shippensburg, there was uh, professors that were currently working or were retired law enforcement. As they were teaching out of the book, they would also incorporate their, their work experiences into the, the classroom. Even out in these areas? We currently have six different employees, mm -hmm. and all are either currently attending SHIP or have graduated from SHIP. Okay, so we'll have that go to our... Uh, there's one thing that I find in common among the SHIP students, and that is that even on the intern level, they are prepared to enter the workforce. I learned I got the third interview on the spot, so they flew me out to Milwaukee, and I spent two days there. So I have like six months, and I'm already employed and accepted, so it's very nice.
Welcome back. Today we're talking about how we're preparing students for success after graduation. Linda, tell us about yourself and also about your work with alumni. Sure. I uh, hail from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, one of six kids. And so the state system of higher education was a great option for me. I'm a two-time graduate of Bloomsburg University. I have a bachelor's and master's wow. from Bloomsburg in education. And I'm probably a great example of what we're talking about today because when I student taught, I knew I didn't want to be a teacher for the rest <laughs> of my life. Fortunately, at Bloomsburg, I had great mentors. I had a lot of leadership experience. I served on our Council of Trustees as the student trustee and realized that there was a career in higher education. And so I'm starting my 30th year in higher education as a result of great mentors who really helped guide and shape who I am today. In my current role, I, I've worked in res life, I've worked in admissions, I've worked in new student orientation, but I currently work in university advancement. And um, no offense to our esteemed panelists, but I think I might have the best job here because <laughs> in my role, I get to travel around the country and meet with our alumni and really update them about the university, but more importantly, listen to their stories and hear about their successes in their careers, in their personal lives, in their communities. And very often they tie it back to their experience at Bloomsburg. And I just can't imagine a better way to spend a career than just hearing the success stories and really tying those individuals back to the institution and the strategic priorities that we have. Uh, so so it's, it's been a great career and, and the system in Bloomsburg has been really good to me. Oh, that's terrific. Well, Dr. Carter, talking about your time at Clarion, what do you recall as the opportunities that you had at Clarion that kind of shaped you throughout your, your career? Well, there were so many. Uh, I had the opportunity to get involved in a lot of leadership activities, and it started because I was a track and field athlete and was captain of the track team. Uh, but I, I was involved in the student programming board, the Black Student Association, and Greek life. So I had varied leadership experiences. But inside the classroom, I also had the opportunity to get involved with peer tutoring and mentoring, and they didn't really call it that back then, but that's what it was. Um, I had a radio show called Roughing It, where I talked about <laughs> hunting and fishing, which was really quite interesting. Um, I was involved in the campus TV, um, so, so there were so many opportunities to get involved. And what we're now calling high impact practices and experiential learning were alive and well at Clarion back then. And when I look now at what's going on at college campuses and how that has transformed into a robust environment, it's very exciting to see the state system has grown and developed in such a way that our students are able to keep pace with students from the best universities across the country because of the work we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Stephen, what are some of the skills you gained at, at Mansfield? You, you've mentioned some, but uh, any further thoughts on, on what you, you got out of your years from a skills standpoint? Well, like Dr. T Carter, I did some uh, tutoring uh, <laughs> as well. I did peer tutoring. Um, I also uh, uh, participated with the cross country team, um, which was uh, uh, you know, very helpful to me. Um, and I also uh, I got involved in student government. So you learn the leadership roles and, and things like that. But, it, it, you know, again, it comes back to what I said before. I think it, the, the, the ability to have a, a very vigorous education, but small, mm -hmm. uh, so that the interaction was, uh, was constant. And uh, that was the thing that I felt was the most helpful to me. Mm -hmm. I could handle myself pretty well by the time I graduated from college. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure, I could see that. I call that the power of small. There yes. is that, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, great. Now we're gonna take a quick break and visit California University. My research project consists of taking three natural supplements and we're going to be putting those supplements into fruit flies, food. And then the second part of that research project is we're going to take the gene that codes for irisine in humans, which is an exercise hormone, and we're going to try and put that gene into the flies and see if they can fend off sort of a high fat diet because of the production of that hormone. 
the Center for Undergraduate Research uh, funded Anne's project and I'm really glad uh, it gives her the opportunity to work on this project, uh, to go far deeper than she would have been able to without funding. We live in an age where uh, simply majoring in a particular topic and putting together a, a collection of courses and, and even making a good GPA is not enough to be recognized. You, you need enhancements to your education and, and undergraduate research is one of those enhancements. My research is to see if pre-service teachers use the same processes in math and science lesson plans. I discovered that a lesson plan is more than just teaching the content in itself. It needs to be hands-on, it needs to be engaging because if it's not, then the kids won't learn. My research project is designing the costumes for the first year show, Wiley and the Hairy Man. What a lot of people don't realize is that theater requires a lot of research, especially in the design aspects. We need to know what kind of world our show is taking place in. So this is a great opportunity for Annabelle because the arts, particularly theater, require a lot of research. She has to do conceptual research and technical research, um, research on what other productions did. They helped send me and a group of other students over to USITT's in Salt Lake City last spring. Um, I was able to learn from many different costume designers and makeup designers, so I saw where I was and where I could be. Thanks to the Center for Undergraduate Research, I not only received funding for my research, but I received funding to travel to the NARST conference in Baltimore and present my findings with Dr. Cormus. It's very important for, say, Annabelle to take the lead on a project like she's doing now, and she can show that she has the experience to do it. At the pace that information uh, is generated, most of what we learned in college is obsolete within five years, and so uh, unless you want to be going back to college again and again and again, you really have to learn how to learn. The skill sets that you learn when you're doing independent research, these are the things where you get to learn advanced skills, things that you don't necessarily get in a three-hour lab period, that you can learn one-on-one -on -one with a faculty mentor, and these types of more cutting-edge skills that we can only do because they're funded by the Center for Undergraduate Research, these are the types of things that employers are really looking for. The fact that we're supported to make our own scientific inquiries at what is essentially a very young age in the scientific community, I think is really amazing. Welcome back. Today we're talking about how our state universities prepare our students for success after graduation. Stephen, as a first-generation college student, how did Mansfield support you along the way? It was a nurturing environment, but it was also an environment that allowed me to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, there was a constant check-in with the chair of my department. <laughs> uh, he made sure, or she made sure, that I was doing what I needed to do academically and that I was behaving myself <laughs> uh, and that uh, uh, they were there for me to offer advice of any sort, really. Um, they became uh, mentors and um, guided me with career advice along the way so that uh, when I did do the internship and I w decided I wanted to do state government versus federal government, you know, they, those were that was the result of conversations that I'd had along the way with, uh, with my uh, department uh, leaders. Wow, that's great. Hey, Linda, how important is it for students to understand career mm -hmm. planning and preparation? Yeah, well, we found that our students don't know what they don't know, but they come into college looking for a well-paying job and a career they love. And we have, have to help them understand that their career and professional development is really just like their education. It's a process. Mm -hmm. It doesn't start when you're ready to graduate and walk across the stage and look for a job. It actually starts in the freshman year. And as we bring <coughs> students into our campuses, we need to provide great opportunities for them to first discover their skills, their unique attributes, and how they connect with their careers and majors. But beyond that, give them relevant experiences, which really build out the skills that employers are looking for. Mm -hmm. And then as they're ready to walk across the stage, arm them with a plan to really search for that first position to, to take that next step from student to, to uh, professional. And so our students really need that kind of guidance. And we like to say we want to make them eat their veggies early and often <laughs> and look at their career and professional development much like they do with their education. Mm -hmm. It's a process, it takes time, and you really need to work at it all four or five years while you're at our institutions. Sure. Dr. Carter, again, the process and taking time, how did your connection to Clarion uh, University help prepare you for the next chapter in your life? <laughs> well, it really laid the foundation for 
my path to leadership. Uh, it gave me the opportunity to be creative, to fail, and to succeed. Um, the, the, the supportive environment was extraordinary, from the faculty to the staff to the student body. Everyone really supported the learning process. So it really laid the foundation for how I could be successful and what I needed to do in order to go to the next level. So taking risks that were appropriate, being able to step back and, and really assess what I was doing, you know, were we benefiting the entire student body in ways we were attempting to do that? Was the track team being as successful as it should be? All of that, the, the coaches, the administrators, everyone was involved in my, my path. That's terrific. So I think at this point, I mean, what, what are some other things, uh, Linda, you might want to talk about in terms of that alumni student connection that you, you work with? Yeah, I think most of us think of our alum as philanthropists, right? They support priorities and they provide scholarships for students. But we like to think about alum also as the human endowment of our institutions. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the alumni, you know, think about the tremendous pro professional expertise that they bring to the table, the professional network that's wide and expansive, and professional opportunities that they can bring uh, to bear on behalf of our students. And so we really, through the process, like to get students connected with alumni early. Mm -hmm. The alum first model what it means to be an alum of the institution, but they also become mentors, uh, hosts for job shadowing opportunities, internships. They bring their employers to the table for undergraduate research and for employment of our graduates. And so many alum love to give back in this way. Uh, they really like to give their time and their expertise, and our students really benefit in that career development process from it. Well, thank you very much. Hey, we're going to take a quick break now and go visit Cheney University. I'm from Philadelphia, born and raised. Uh, I was educated in the Philadelphia School District. Um, right now, I work at the University of Pennsylvania in the Penn Center for Minority Serving Institutions. My path to Cheney started with my parents. I, I guess by definition, I'm a second generation college student. Both my parents attended university. I was an average student, but I knew because of my parents, college was the next logical choice. Cheney just was the better fit for me. It had what I wanted. They gave me the support that I needed, but they also gave me financial support. So. Um, coming in as a Keystone Honor student, I didn't have to take out a loan. So it just made more sense for me to come to Cheney. So I'm a class of 2017 graduate. Uh, immediately after leaving Cheney, I took a position with the Kellogg Company where I came on as a sales representative. Uh, since then, I have transitioned to a new company. So now I'm a sales representative with Kraft Heinz. I think what's most interesting about my story is initially college wasn't in the plans for me. So my junior year of high school, I transferred to a school in Philadelphia called MOTEP Charter, um, where I was able to develop uh, a network of mentors and advisors uh, who really stressed the importance of college or college education, uh, most of which were Cheney alumni. Um, so I had a lot of people around me who showed me the success after college and what that would be like. And from that point, I knew that Cheney was kind of the home for me. In high school, I was a good student, but not a great student, and so it was like I kind of floated in the middle. But coming to Cheney, I was labeled as a scholar. So from like day one, that reaffirmations and affirmations that you can do it gave me confidence, and it, it felt to me that Cheney valued me and made a commitment to me. I felt the support, like, immediately. Um, I think my first contact at Cheney uh, had to be student relations. Uh, so Ms. Thorne was a big impact in my four years here. Uh, from there, uh, I met Dr. Turnip Seed, who heads the hospitality program, and uh, we were close for the entire four years. He, he's had a major part of my success as well. So working with my mentors here, um, Dr. Wesley Plummer, um, Dr. Tara Kent, helped shape my identity around career and education. I had a major in business management and a minor in tourism. Uh, and what that did was it helped me to participate in a number of internships. In fact, I had six in internships while I was here at Cheney in addition to a study abroad. I came in as a business major, but over the course of my time and like my experience at Cheney, it kind of pushed me back towards education. So going through the business department and being involved in so many activities on campus, I kind of found my niche in higher education. The confidence really came from being challenged to lead here at Cheney, whether in a classroom 
or just in the general campus community. I was always challenged to lead. I think that I got the entire collegiate experience. I was involved in almost every collegiate activity that you could think of on campus, but I, I credit Cheney for giving me that opportunity and giving me that support that let me know that I could do it. I would definitely say that my degree holds weight. I, I think once you transition into the workforce, it's not so much where you, where you attended school, but really how much experience you have and your ability to apply it to whatever you're gonna be doing. I think um, the education I received at Cheney University definitely stacks up against um, other schools and other institutions because it prepared me not only inside the classroom but outside of the classroom. If I could offer any advice to prospective students um, or current students, it would be to be present. I think that presence plays a big role in your ability to achieve success. Welcome back. We're here talking about how our 14 state universities prepare our students for success after graduation. Linda, uh, what are employers looking for in our state system graduates these days? You know, I think most people think that employers first think about the degree. What is the major? Mm -hmm. And that is an important part of the process. But what we know from employers is that they're really looking for a skill set. Uh, they're looking for our students, our graduates, to be analytical, to be able to communicate verbally, in writing, and in presentations. Uh, they're looking for our students to be able to work in teams and be collaborative. And these are the types of qualities and characteristics along with the major that make our students attractive to employers. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, it's the soft skills. You know, our employers want our graduates to be able to network. They want them to be able to understand how to function in the workplace. Things like being on time and how to write a professional email, how to answer the phone, those kinds of things might seem inconsequential, but it really rolls up into what it means to be a professional. Mm -hmm. And so the employers, again, looking at the major, but also that skill set, sure. that value they add to the organization. Thanks. Let me ask Dr. Carter, as president of Shippensburg, what stands out most to you about our graduates? Well, I think it goes back to what Linda was saying. Our students are prepared. They're really prepared to go into the workplace and hit the ground running. And you can't say that about students from every university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are providing them with opportunities on campus that are really parallel to experiences they will have in the workplace. And that value that they're bringing to employers is extraordinary because they will then have to spend less time in training. They will have to spend less money preparing the workforce. Mm -hmm. um, so so the, the high impact practices, the out of classroom experiences, <laughs> what's happening in the classroom, research opportunities, all of those things make our students extraordinary. Mm -hmm. well, let me give Stephen the last word. Why do you think our graduates are prepared to, to compete for any job? Because they have a stronger work ethic. I think in large measure the students that go to state system schools worked hard to get into college, they worked hard to stay into college, mm -hmm. and they want to make the very best of it. And the best way to make the best of it is to be the hardest working and the most aware and have the, the best work ethic going into the uh, professional workplace. We're going to end with that because that's darn good stuff. Well, thank you all very much. That's all the time we have today. <coughs> thank you to our panelists for being here and talking about these very important things. And to you for watching and learning more about our 14 state universities and how we contribute to our student success after graduation. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities or visit us online 